Hey, I'm back. My mic's not on my face. That is better. Particularly for people watching online, it's better. So uh, great to see you, whether you're joining us online or thanks so much for th those of you that met us or that are hanging out with us here in the room. It's so much better to teach to a face than a camera. So appreciate you guys are there. This is my friend Ev. You, he was hanging out with my wife earlier. Um, Ev, what grade are you in, kid? Um, I am in second grade. Second grade. Where do you go to school? Uh, Bear Creek Community. Awesome. Do you like school? Um, How, tell me, yeah, I'll, I'll just stop right there. I'll stop you right there. Uh, what's the best thing about school? What do you like about school? Recess and lunch and PE is the best things and stuff like Amen. that. Amen. That's exactly right. I think that's what your dad would say too, probably. Yeah. What do you do? Are you doing anything fun today, this weekend? Uh, yeah. I have family over there leaving today, and we're going to... Have you ever watched The Mandalorian? Anybody? Oh, know? yeah. The, totally. The second, se uh, the second season's out, and today... Um, Today is like the, sec the second yeah, episode the second of the second episode season. Coming up. I haven't seen Every the second week it episode comes out yet. And oh. we're going to watch that and we're going to watch football. And it's just going to be a really good day for Awesome. Me today. I appreciate that you're wearing orange today because I'm wearing orange today too. I, I mentioned the Broncos yes, last week just for the first time I mentioned them. And they had this miraculous comeback. And so I thought, gosh, what's going to happen if I actually wear some Bronco gear today? It's going to be a blowout. So. Um, I heard you like donuts. Do you like donuts? Yes, I love donuts. All right, donuts. so I have something for you. It's right here. A donut? Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a fake donut, though, right? It's like, yeah. Fake okay, donut. so, yeah. I'm not going to eat that right now because I'm good. talking around. Good, because I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. So if, if I just said, hey, Ev, if you, will you give me that donut back and I'll give you something way better, what would you think? Um, I would think no. <laughs> <laughs> Because you don't believe me? You don't think I'm going to give you something way better than that little donut? Well, I love donuts, but I guess it would be a yes or a no. I, I know. know. Let's think about it because we're going to have to make that decision. Yeah. Do you want to keep the donut I just gave you or trade it to me for something that I'm saying is way better? What do you think? Definitely trade it. Awesome. That is a good choice. Because here's what I have for you down here. What do you think I have for you? A bigger donut? A big oh. box of delicious donuts, <laughs> including a s'more donut. Oh. Do you like s'mores? Yes, I do. So I'm going to trade you this kind of cr crappy, fake little donut for this beautiful box of big donuts. <laughs> what do you think that has to do with anything about church today? Do you have any idea? Mm, no. I, I don't really like either, it. but I love donuts. Um, no, here, here's this thing. We're going to talk a little bit about generosity today. We're going to talk about laying stuff down. And here's, here's what we're talking about. God often asks us to say, hey, you know what? Will you, will you lay down that? Will you kind of set aside? Will you give away this kind of this crappy half-baked donut? Because I have something way better for you. And, and you know what? The, the reason that you traded me is because you thought I was telling you the truth, huh? Yeah. You didn't think I would be lying to you. That I would give you. What if I? What if I pulled out a bag of a half-eaten donut? <laughs> That's what I traded you. That would be bad, right? Terrible. Terrible, right? And here's I think some some things that we do. I think as we as we think about the things that God asks us to lay down, um, we have to realize that what He's asking us to do is to lay some stuff down, not to prove how much we love Him, but to give us an avenue to experience He's just loving these donuts, uh, to experience Him more. So I'm going to pray, and uh, we're going to let Ev go back to his seat and eat his donuts. Uh, awesome. God, thanks for uh, today. And I, as we press into this truth of, of laying stuff down, of, of being willing to live freely, open-handedly, and generously, will you, will you build our trust in you that you really do have something better for us? And will you help us to understand the fact that we don't lay stuff down to earn your love, to get you to like us. We, we lay it down to experience you fully. Thanks, God. Amen. All right, let's give Ev a hand. Thanks, Ev, for helping us. You can take this. Watch out. Shauna's going to try and eat those donuts. Well, when you think about revival, we're talking about this in the series Revival Reclaimed, and some of the kind of the common terminology around revival are this like surrender, sacrifice, 
offering, right? It's that, like this idea of like, oh, what am I going to have to give up to experience God? And, and he's going to try and take all this fun from me. And what I'm hoping today, and, and really I'm going to speak pretty short today, is that we would look at those words and look at this as an invitation to life. That, that as God asks us, invites us to lay stuff down and, and ultimately lay down our lives, that really this is this invitation to experience him. And that's kind of the idea we're going to talk about today. And if you're a kid and you're taking notes, here's your first fill in the blank thing. To experience his life, I have to let go of mine. To experience his life, I have to let go of mine. And when we talk about his, I'm talking about the life that Jesus offers. And not just the life that he offers, but the life that he empowers us to live. And, and, um, and I think that, that word experience is huge because I, I didn't say to understand more about the life he offers, to get a historical overview of the kinds of things he might do in someone's life. We have to lay down our lives to actually experience it. To, to live a life in such a way that, that, that uh, people look at us and go, oh man, I didn't think people could forgive like that. I didn't, I didn't think people could, uh, could, could express grace like that. To experience his life and have to let go of mine and to live we'll talk about this idea of like living with open living open-handedly being able to to let go of some things um, some things in our past or some things we're holding on to that prevent us from living and experiencing new life so we're going to open up the bible to romans chapter 6 if you have your bibles open up to romans chapter 6 if you're looking on your phone bible um, just make sure you're looking at NIV because that's the one I'll be reading from. If you're in the room, you can grab a Bible that's around here. I encourage you to grab that. I encourage you, if you're coming in the room, grab one of these or just bring your own Bible when you come. Um, that way we won't have to keep recycling some of these Bibles that we have. And you can actually grab a pen and write in this. If you're, w if you're watching online, just grab whatever Bible you have around or check online. I'm still, it's John Acts Romans. I'm like, why can't I find it? It's right here, John, Acts, Romans, before Corinthians. So Romans chapter 6. Paul, the apostle, is talking, and he says this in verse 1. Actually, I read 1 and 2. What should we say then? Should we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? There's a guy named Clarence Jordan, and if you don't know the life of Clarence Jordan, just, just take some time this week to look, up, look him up. He was a, a white farmer in the late 40s, early 50s in um, rural uh, Georgia, and he had a multi-ethnic farm. Multi people lived together of multi-ethnicities, and you can imagine in that time of history, that wasn't a very good thing. Uh, it wasn't very, wasn't smiled upon, and so we had several encounters with the KKK, and one of the, one of those encounters, as the KKK rolled in, it was going to burn his farm down, he just said, boys, you can, you can obey your, or you can follow your grandpappies, or you can follow Jesus, which one's it going to be? He wrote a version of the Bible called the Cotton Patch Bible, which is really a, his, uh, a series of sermons that he gave throughout the South, and uh, his, his um, translation of this verse says this, should we go on grading sinning so that grace may increase hell no he says that's what paul is trying to say and and this this these two verses are a picture of this life lived in two camps of saying i want to follow jesus and i want to continue to to pursue the life that this world offers this this idea of of living in both camps and and paul's just going hey hey hey, hey. you can't do you can't do that you can't say one and then do the other it, it, you you can't like, oh, you know what? I'm going to continue to chase the things that this world offers for life. And then I'll just ask God for forgiveness and experience his grace. He said, he, what his, his point is, as, as we walk in or through, what we're going to see is that's not life at all. That's not life at all. And I think one of the, one of the things in our current state uh, is that it, it's, it's peeled back some of, these, some of these things and revealed some of these ways that we're chasing life some of these places where we're finding comfort, where we're setting up our own little kingdoms um, and not relying on God. So he continues, and he says this. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God the Father, we too may live a new life. And he's, he's setting up this idea of baptism, and if you've been around here and, and uh, experienced one of these one baptisms, um, 
which I hope that we get to celebrate again soon. Uh, it, it's this picture. We have someone in, we, ha we have this little, like this horse, horse trough that sits right here. And then uh, we bring this person in and they're standing there. And this is a picture of, of I, there was a life that I had before, before I followed Jesus. And, and in that life, it, it was this life of striving to be good enough. It was this, this life of, of chasing my own comfort and, and pulling myself up by my own bootstraps. It was this idea of, of I'm going to be loved if I make myself lovable. And even religiously maybe trying to chase this ladder of religion to try and get to a place where God would love me. And when, what we're saying is when we lay people down, it's to say, you know what, I'm dying to that life. And I'm, I don't, we don't just keep them under there for very long uh, for lots of reasons. There's lots of red tape around that. But also because it's this picture that we're identifying with the death of Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. That this death of the old person, and then as we bring him up out of the water, we're saying raised to walk in new life. Like, like the life I now live, I don't live in my own energy and my own power. The life I live now, I live in the power and energy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that, he's saying? Don't you know that when you were baptized into Jesus, you were baptized into his death? You were therefore buried with Christ through baptism. That old self, that old way of life, that old way of thinking is buried. And then he says this, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, just as Christ was raised from the dead, how was Christ raised from the dead? The power of God in his life because of obedience that he had to go to the cross, right? He willingly stepped into death so that he could experience resurrection. There's this great song by the collection, and, and one of the lines says, um, you speak of resurrection, but you're too scared to die. And it's just the statement of, um, we can continue to grit our teeth and try real hard to be loving and faithful and grace-filled people, to try and be good people, to try and pull ourselves up by the, our bootstraps, to base everything on how well we're doing, but, but the invitation of Paul and the invitation of Jesus is to just simply say, I'm going to die to that and let that go. To experience his life, we have to, have to, have to let go of ours. Um, I went to this camp. We used to actually take students to this camp outside of Buena Vista, and they had this swing. Um, it's this massive swing that you get strapped into and clipped into, and then they let you go, and it goes over this big canyon, like hundreds of feet down, and then it comes back, and it's they're like, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. I'm like, well, then don't call it the death swing uh, if you don't want me to be afraid about it. So you get, you get on this thing, and you strap in, and then you go. And um, I, get, I, I get this picture of life sometimes that we, uh, we're like halfway there as followers of Jesus. Like we get strapped in, and we're like, oh, man. I, I see that this is going to lead to an experience that I've never had before, this experience where, uh, where somebody else is in control, of this experience where God is going to bring me. And, but we're just holding on, clinging tightly to this, to this old way of life, these old things that we hold on to. And for some of us, maybe that's just the old way that we find our value. For some of us, maybe it's our, it's our identity. For some of us, maybe it's, it's just this clinging hard to, com to comfort and this idea of, man, I, uh, I'm, I'm, here's where I know my life is going to go. And if I let go, I'm not sure if my life is going to go there. And I'll just say, man, freedom doesn't come from continuing to hold on to those things. Freedom comes when we let that go. And we, we trust that, that our lives in the hands of God, in the power of Jesus and the resurrection, are going to be way better than anything that we could hold on to or manufacture ourselves. Um, there's this, this great quote from um let's just go to it real quick richard foster says the submission is the ability to lay down the terrible burden of always needing to get our own way think about that the terrible burden of always having to get our own way if we could only see that most things in life are not major issues when we could just hold on hold them lightly or with open hands in submission we are at last free to value other people Really, it, it comes down to this kind of this battle that's going on in our lives and in our cultures, this battle between consumerism and generosity. Is my life going to be, am I going to pursue life by trying to collect stuff? Or am I going to experience God, experience real life, experience his life 
by letting stuff go. And I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about finances, but not just finances. About my time, my dreams, my hopes. Um, and uh, I'm just going to push pause real quick because I, I want to I say this. I am so proud of this place. We have an incredibly generous family. Some of you know early on in, the, uh, in this pandemic, when the, actually in the first, I was going to say the first round of stimulus checks, when the, when the, when the only round of stimulus checks came out, um, I started having some conversations with people that said, I don't really need this. Some, some people desperately needed it. And there was people that said, I don't really need this. And so we just said, hey, you know what? If, if you're in that position, would you consider giving it away, giving it to us so we can give it to people who really need it? And, um, and so since, uh, since March, I think, um, as we gathered that money, we were able to, to take people, take applications from people who needed money from a cell phone bill to rent assistance to uh, a new tire on their car and give it away. And I just got this. This is a recap. We actually just ran out of those funds, just finished that in the last couple of weeks. It just says this, from May 2020, to October 2020, our Westwoods family gifted a total of $16,642 to the Community Compassion Fund. These funds were distributed in response to a variety of needs ranging from, temp raising from temporary housing allowance, emergency medical bills, emergency mechanical bills, and more, all for families and individuals impacted by circumstances we now associate with 2020. We were able to meet so many families in their current moment of need amidst all sorts of hard situations. And only monetarily, but also with other resources, sharing about uh, Joy's Kitchen, our, it's our food distribution ministry, and other assistance programs available, mental health, utility assistance, rental assistance, and with person, personal human interactions in their current situations. The gratitude that was expressed by the recipients was significant. A huge thanks to everyone who contributed to the CCF. Their gifts truly had a direct impact and made a difference for individuals and families who had been facing many struggles this year. Thank you. And I'll just say thank you as well. Um, to, to be a part of a place like that, it, it's interesting. Um, it, it feels a lot, I've shared this, it feels a lot like we're restarting. Like, like we have this great uh, gathering of people and we're, we're stepping into a new reality of what it looks like church is going to be. And actually, I'll, I'll just push pause real quick. We have a we're going to have a thing called Heart and Soul Friday night. We're going we're to space some chairs out around this and, and really have a gathering of folks that feel like, I want to be a part of what Westwoods looks like in going into the future. I want to be a core part of that. And if, if, if you want to be a part of that, just put H and F on. And if you're not signing up for anything other than just coming and listening and praying together and, and listening to, to where we feel like God's calling us. So just put H and S for heart and soul on that, on a prayer card, or you can just comment H and S or heart and soul, and we'll get you signed up for that. Um, one of the things I'm going to share, sorry, this is just, um, in, as, we st as we started the church 20-something years ago, uh, a lot of the focus early on was gathering people and gathering resources, gathering people and gathering resources so we could have an impact. And it's, just, it's been this incredible thing as we've grown up as a church, that, that now more and more, it's about scattering people and about scattering resources for impact, like gather, putting, pulling people together for the purpose of sending them out, gathering money here for the purpose of sending it out. And, um, and that's the kind of place I want to invite you to be a part of, um, to, to step into generosity, to go, oh, my life has to be about more than just me gathering stuff to make myself full. But actually, I'm going to experience God as, as I just press into what it means for me to let some stuff go, to experience his life. We have to let go of ours. To experience his life, I have to let go of mine. Um, I've been watching this show alone. I've, I've talked about it a lot, maybe. Um, there's a show alone. You want to stick that little logo up there, Mike, so we can see? Uh, that's what it looks like. So if you're looking on your, on your DVR, that's what it looks like. So um, they drop these 10 contestants off in the middle of the wilderness, and they say, make it work. They have these, these 10 tools that they get. And so I've been obsessed with this show. I think that I could probably survive. I've been teaching myself lessons like how to start fires with like this and this. So, um, so I've, been, I've been doing this, and like you do, oh, see how good I am? 
so like you just kind of like spark over and there's this preparation so i've been reading about how to do that and one of the things that struck me i'm reading this instruction manual on how to start a fire like this and here's what one of the things said it says this whatever you use to catch a spark it needs to be dry and dead deader the better I like that and um and i just got this picture and i want to share it with you the god of the universe is sparking his power over your life. I'm going to start a fire right now. And uh, and the, the, the issue is sometimes we have so much stuff that we're filled with so much stuff that we're not dead or dry. We've just, we've just kind of cultivated our own little sense of comfort because being dead and dry sounds really hard. And uh, the band's going to come back up actually right now. Um, but I, but I want to invite you to this picture of life that the God of the universe will not stop sparking over you and just hoping that there'll be a part in your life, a part of your heart that will be open and receptive to catch that spark. Does that make sense? That's what, that's what revival is. And, and then you, you'll see it. I, I was going to have a video, but it would just take too long. You know, as, it catch, as this little bundle catches this little spark, it just grows. And then, and then bigger and bigger things kind of get added to it to begin. And then, then things from the outside begin to be added. And I don't know if there's a better picture of renewal and revival than that. We're going to sing this song, um, Lay It All Down. And it's just this invitation to... To, in, to think in my life, what am I holding on to tightly? Is it, is it my stuff? Is it, is it my dream of having this specific kind of relationship? Or is this, this, is this financial future? Is this vocational path that I'm holding on to so tightly that, that God, actually, it's like, it's like holding on, like Ev holding on to that small donut so tightly that he can't <laughs> grab the big box that, that I was offering him. And so I want to invite us all to this exercise. And if you're watching online, I encourage you to do it as well. That, that as we begin to sing this song, we're going to stay seated. And I just invite you to a posture where your, your palms are maybe just on your knees, palms down. And as we begin to sing this song, maybe your, your, your conversation with God can be like, God, what are you calling me to lay down right now? What is it that I'm holding on to so tightly? that I'm not experiencing this, this freedom that you want to call me into. And allow him to speak and, and actually feel some lightness. Because it's not just the little things, it's, his, it's your life. He's, he's asking us, lay down your life. And then, then in the song at some point, I just encourage you to flip your palms up because as we empty ourselves out, then we, we become more and more receptive to that spark of life it's offered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ to us. And then maybe our prayer can be, God, I want to catch a spark. I want this renewal to happen that's bigger than me just gritting my teeth and trying real hard not to do bad stuff. I want this spark to happen that will catch fire in my heart and in my life and in my mind and that everybody around me will be affected. Let that be our prayer as we sing.